more in- information on this new speech law out of Russia. So the words war and invasion are two words that can land you in prison for up to 15 years under the new Russian law. Those words are now considered fake news in the eyes of Putin, who has passed a law criminalizing the intentional spread of what he calls misinformation. That's basically what goes against the government's narrative of involving the Ukraine. The bill was passed through both the both houses of Russian parliament. It's made uh, Russia and foreign uh, reporters scramble to protect their reporters. CNN pulled out, BBC pulled out. I think they might be back now. Um, but the law doesn't stop with just regular old news outlets. TikTok suspended live streaming and new content from Russia saying the new law left the social media giant no choice. Yeah, Vinny will be glad uh, McDonald's shut down. McDonald's, nice. Starbucks, Coca-Cola, I think, mm-hmm. is stopping production there too. Well, that's all good, but you know, when are we going to go in and stop all this? Can't, can't we all get together? Zelensky would very much like an answer I'm, to that question. Come on, gay, gay, gay. Smile <laughs> on your brother. Everybody suck a chode. Try and to come love on one another right, right now. now. I don't know. I, 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 I say every 10 minutes, it's 2022. What, what is going on? And I've also said for a long time, we just need a, a sane, a nation of sane. And a nation of people that are still into you know, human trafficking I mean, and whatever rad. else. To, ad- to address Vinny's question, it is complicated because I feel like something should be done, right? Something should right. be done to solve this. And on the other hand, it feels like prevailing sentiment is we're not the world's police. We don't want to get American soldiers involved, get American, risk American lives. I understand that. But at the same time, wrongs are being done in the world. I Where do you... Where do you, there, I don't think there's a right answer. It's where well, your philosophy lies. In the headline today, which I wasn't going to do a whole story on because it's just awful and there's not much to say about it, they bombed a children's hospital. So everybody in the children's hospital, all the babies and all the workers died. So it's like, yeah, Zelensky's like, I'm just going to start going to Russian separatists if you guys aren't going to help me. Fuck you guys if you're not going to close the airspace. I mean, obviously the problem is they have nukes. He's nuts. We think if we get involved, there's going to be World War III, and that slowed everyone's role. But he's heading to that anyway. He still has the nukes. uh, Look, the bottom line is you have a crazy man. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's going into another country. He's murdering people. And we're all sitting around in the Western world going, well, okay, we're going to take a look-see. Didn't we do that with uh, with Hitler? And look what we ended up with him. Yeah, but what if Hitler had nukes? I mean, we'd have to think about it. Mm. You know, I mean, obviously it was all conventional shit back then. Right. We ended up with a nuke at the at the end. But if Hitler had nukes, to use your example, we'd all have to have a pretty long discussion on how much intervention we wanted to yeah. do yeah. when he's nuts and he has nukes. There's you no know? easy answer. It's, it's, it's a philosophical debate. Well, and they can just say, like, sorry, you're not a part of NATO. Like, this sets a precedent with the next country that's not a part of NATO. So that's what they're... That's what they're saying, but it's pretty fucking horrific. Two million people have already fled, uh, I think mostly to Poland at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's still what? I mean, tens of millions of people in the country. Yeah, we don't even want the optics of us and our aircraft or even their aircraft flying out of Ramstein and stuff. There's a whole, we're very worried about setting this guy off. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of weird issues, but... It just goes to show you, well, first off, it's why we don't want crazy people to have nukes. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want Iran (laughs) to have nukes because you're crazy and you have nukes that's uh, homeless, beaked up on speed and a machete. And my kids' party's at the beach this year, you know. So he's crazy. He's got nukes and everyone is freaked out about freaking him out. So what we were talking about earlier, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, et cetera, I, I don't know how much I can say, so I'll be very vague about it, but uh, some of uh, Christie's um, uh, pr- pr- more prominent clients have uh, approached the company to do a little research and see what of our competitors have pulled out of the Russian market because um. we're considering doing the same. But it's a, it's a domino effect, right? Like one company does it, the next company has right. to. Right, you look like an asshole if you don't. Yeah, you have to. It's like the black box for Black Lives Matter on Twitter. 
one guy does it, fine. But oh, once the, everyone the, the, starts the, the, doing the it, then you Sorry. become the outliner. Black box yeah. Yeah. Uh, For the record, I was told to do it and told Chris to fuck off, <laughs> by the way. Thank fucking God I didn't wear a mask. And thank God I didn't stop hiking on horse trail. And thank God I told Black Lives Matter to suck my dick. Yeah. Gay, 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 gay. Uh, early and often. But, but you did have that live show in Russia. That, that was a mistake. Yeah, uh, looking yes. back. <laughs> but I'm playing Sun City instead. <laughs> oh, I switched the venue. Mike got it worked out. <laughs> well, I'll also say watch your old tweets because this isn't just about getting canceled from like hosting the Oscars. If you're a journalist or, you know, maybe you live in Russia and you have a years old tweet um, and you're a Russian citizen, they'll get you on that, too. It's retroactive. Like they'll throw you in, or in prison. Yes. Shit. So can we get careful. a can we get a better helmet for the war correspondence instead of mm. that weird powder blue mm. Darth Vadery sort yeah. of thing? Yeah, we need a better helmet, like like a, a better looking helmet or a more yeah, I mean, safe helmet. I, 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 first off, I don't that thing's Ooh. doing as much as the hard hat is when the I beam <laughs> falls from the fifty second floor. Like I don't think that's going to do I, a I lot. Got, I got the answer. Mm. Switch hitter's batter helmet. Mm. Like for you know, oh, with the, the, the two both, ears, both yeah, both sides. You know yeah, I mean? that way you got the coverage, the brim. Yeah, you know what I mean. What team we going with? Uh, Christ. I mean, well, Yankees feels. Do, you know, do people even know now. that Cleveland's the Guardians now? Get that out there. Oh, yeah, sure. Get, get the, the Guardians go. Yeah. Two birds. Yeah, that is. It's not a flattering helmet. It's just, yeah. it's just not, you know, yeah. it's like, like seeing a guy wearing a motorcycle helmet with no full face or right. no visor yeah. on it yeah. just kind of looks lame. Yeah. Is it because they want it to look like you couldn't be mistaken for a soldier under any circumstances? I think it's the batting helmet. Right. That's, uh, that's some of it. <laughs> Whatever team wins the World Series that that's, year. Yeah, that's Send off a bunch of Braves helmets. Yeah. Do you know how good looking you have to be? To wear a motorcycle crash helmet or a car crash helmet with no visor and no full face anything. Mm. And then you have to pull be it off. fucking stunning uh, to do that. Yeah. And it still doesn't work. I mean, Evil Knievel used to jump like that. Think oh, yeah, back he, in he the day. Have, you know, Fonzie. Oh, yeah. Sure. Fonzie, Fonzie never had the. Even yeah. Fonzie couldn't pull it he off. You can't pull it off. It's no. never been done. Well, let's talk about somebody else who couldn't pull something off recently. Poor guy. Tony Hawk, recovering from a broken bone. I'm going to show you the x-ray, not an actual bone poking through anything, but the x-ray is fascinating. Uh, the professional skateboarder shared an unfortunate... It is. Say, what is the show? It's, it is. Uh, this unfortunate update on his Instagram. Go ahead and put that up. About his... Look at that. Mm. Look at that. Oh, that's a clean femur break. Yeah, it's exactly that's what it is. That's how Vinny did his uh, boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's shiplap bone. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, you could take it down, but I did want you to see that. I he's coming, for that he's shit. coming yeah. in here soon enough. Is he? Hopefully. Is he? <laughs> we'll see. But yeah. now. Um, his Instagram said, well, yesterday sucked. I broke my elbow 20 years ago and managed to make a full comeback. This recovery of a broken femur will be much harder because of its severity and my age. But he's I'm up for the 50 challenge. 50 something. 53. Right? He continued saying, there's a strange irony. Now, I didn't know this. There's a strange irony that this happened on the eve of HBO releasing a trailer for for until the wheels fall off. That Sam Jones documentary about his about Hawk's life and career, which is anything from publicity. That's right. <laughs> which is basically about how I do what I do at my age. Um, Hawk also discussed a promise he made to himself many times before that he will not stop skating until he is physically unable. Well, he is now. Dave yeah. might be I mean, here. That, He's on a couple of crutches. It. Yeah. I don't know if it's his right or his left leg because if it's mm. your right leg, you can. Drive a car, okay, right. an automatic. You just need mm. all you need is the brake yeah, and the gas you on the drive right goofy leg. Foot. But um, <laughs> he is, I, he's a real nice guy. I did Toyota Grand Prix with him a million years ago. I think we went out one night and had in like Long Beach, you know, like the night before the race with like Keanu Reeves and Adrian Brody or oh, something nothing. like that. It was just a drop something. It yeah. was really a cool. Yeah, that was that was fun. Tony like picked us all up in his souped Skateboard. up Dodge. No, he has uh Vinny, you're gonna like this. He has the uh Dodge SUV with the Viper engine in it. Oh yeah. The crazy yeah. oh God, I'll think of I'll they call think it of an who, SVT, who, I think, or something like that. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good All the dude. boys piled in. All the boys piled in, and we went and had ribs. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Such good, a good night. night. Yeah. Gay. <laughs> gay, 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 gay. Gay, 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 gay. Gay, gay. gay Jude. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Please, Brian, you went too far. Uh, let's talk Kelly Clarkson. Her divorce from Brandon Blackstock has been finalized. And Adam, I know you you like these kind of stories. Vinny, you probably like it too. The 39-year-old singer will pay her ex a one-time payment of $1.3 million, as well as monthly child support. Monthly child support for their two children, $45,601. What, Vinny, what would your, when you were nine... Your right. parents got divorced. What do you think the child support would need to be? Somewhere between zero and a hundred bucks a month. Yeah, I think I would have got like a pair of tough skins every four years. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say every month. What are you a Rockefeller? Yeah, uh, Forty-four, forty-five thousand six hundred dollars every month. Over a half a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although Clarkson gets to keep the Montana property, Blackstock's going to stay there and pay her two grand a month until June while he stays. In addition to the one-time payment, Clarkson will also have to pay her ex $115,000 in spousal support per month until January 31st, 2024. So he's like in her cabin or something and, yeah, not, and not in Montana, not leaving. But he has to pay her $2,000 a month until June. Oh, oh for, for yeah. rent. Yeah. So he gets $1.3 million. 115,000 in spousal support and 45 grand a month for the kids. Does she make her bones touring or does she make her bones with her talk show? Or is her talk show still on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's like a. They I lo- see her at the doctor's office. Yeah. Oh, really? I think people yeah. who don't work worth? love her. The, she she, 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 well, she worth a lot? I think so. I mean, her I albums, I'm sure, have gone year double five platinum. Or something, right? But also her music, I mean, I don't know how much of that uh, American Idol owned or whatever, but I mean, she's a hit maker. Can you name a hit? Yeah. The Trouble with Love. Wait, hang on. Can Hold you on. name a hit? Yeah, I can. Really? Since you've been gone, since that's either, one. Since you've been since gay, since you've been gay, yeah. Yeah. You've been gay. <laughs> my life would suck cock without you. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. She that's as much as I got. All right, next. Story. Uh, okay, so this is kind of sad. Um, has anyone seen Phil Collins lately? Oh, he's not well. He is yeah, not looking I'm going to show you. He's, he's, so he's, Ill. he's been declining for a while now, and he's now touring as the Genesis frontman. Uh, but he's sitting in a chair in what's going to be their final tour. Um, although he remains seated throughout the performance at Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin, uh, Colin still managed to sing the hits. Um, I'm going to show you a clip. This is kind of more of a Jumbotron clip, so go ahead and make that full screen, yeah. Uh, so Fucking couple, sweet voice. <laughs> yeah. A couple years, I guess 2007, um, that's when a lot of this began. He had nerve damage from a spinal injury that affected his... Uh, Impact his vertebrae, and it's kind of confined him to a wheelchair. Can I say this? Still can sing a little bit. Yeah. You, but you kind of bum the audience out. Yeah. Unless, because oh. no one wants to see you performing from a wheelchair. Suspended. No. Oh. Better. Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl's Rock and That's Roll right. Throne. Throne. That's yeah. right. You yeah. go talk to Tony Hawk. Yeah. Get that get walking that, cast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Slap it on your right or left leg. Go out there and sit in the rock and roll throne. <laughs> yeah, and this do literally. It from there. Yeah, then because, it becomes value yes, added at yes. that point. This is a chair. This is an office chair that they rolled out. I mean, it's just a chair. It's a bummer. It's yeah. Nice. yeah the, the bottom line is, he was a, a pretty good singer when he was drumming at the same time. So this is a lot less work. Right. Yes. So he could do the same That's thing with a lot point. less work. All the guys who drum and sing, my, I tip my cap to mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. I could never do that. You got him, you got Don Henley, right? Yeah, of course. And Levon Helm. Levon Helm. Yeah. And, uh, of course, most famously, the guy from The Romantics. Right. <laughs> most famous. That guy. Right. Yeah, the I guy. Mean, well, they're well, obviously bigger <laughs> yeah. than the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that guy, yeah, What's bigger than the band, bigger than the Eagles. What's his name again? You know what it is. His I, name I, is I do, but I'm asking his, you. His name is Guy Gay. Okay. <laughs> There's got to be a guy named Guy Gay, yeah, you really, right? You really did know. And then his PE co- Wait a minute. Gay is the last name. You know, Gay, there's guy. plenty of guys in the yeah. NFL that's a Marvin Gay. That's right. And then Guy's a name. And then you, there's got to be some guys named Guy Gay. And then when Just he's, law of averages. When he's 13, his PE coach is reading the roster out and they do it backwards. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So Smith, he's like, a, Alan. But, uh, yeah. Gay guy. Gay guy. <laughs> yeah, Hello. You know, Raise your hand. It? If you're a gay guy, yeah. got any yeah. gay guys out here? Hand up. <laughs> Sorry, Dawson. That's all right. My bad. Uh, you know who else was a drummer who sang? Uh, the dude from Three Doors Down. Mm. That Superman song. If I go crazy, then will you still call me super gay? gay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> good. Wow. That's good. <laughs> 
Find me that romantics video. I love that fucking guy. Romantics is fucking cooked. Yeah. yeah. And that guy was great. And he was he was drumming yeah. the whole time. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's impressive. And you always think of the drummer as kind of like the loner in the back. He has the plexiglass around him. He's in his own little world. Whoa! But, oh. No, no, finish. I just I'm done. Something. I just Please. Something. No, I'm Please. sorry. So I was inappropriate. I insist. In the movie Almost Famous... The drummer never speaks. That's a running that's right, joke. That's right. Yes. Until uh, yeah, the plane's the going plane's down. The plane's about to go down. And he screams out, "I'm, I'm gay!" gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gina, thank you for yeah. making. I wouldn't have yeah. got there if it wasn't oh, for you. I'm so glad you did. So yeah, Phil's kind of holding the uh, mic stand like a kind of like a third leg cane thing he does I saw a 2019 clip he's in the chair he looks a little better but he comes out and says like sorry you know I'm in the chair but we're gonna have fun Uh, so he's been doing this for a couple years this will probably be it he's pretty frail there but he still could kind of I mean if it's an iPhone video but he still could kind of sing but wait one more thing with drummers because the (laughs) Pam and Tommy Lee thing is on my wife finished it she didn't she doesn't know enough about Tommy Lee it's like honey the thing and guys are not gay. For, we were watching this thing. The guy was steering the boat with a scot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he, this guy had, he had the hugest hog in the world. I can't understand why he was upset about this whole yeah. thing. But, you know, you're watching this thing. She's asking me questions. And I'm trying to explain to her. I was like, honey, they used to bring him out on stage in a cage with his drums. And Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. It's flipping upside down and sideways. And Tommy is not missing a beat. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. It, it's it's the most amazing thing you've ever seen. And this Sebastian Stan guy, holy shit, he's the one who plays Tommy. He's yeah. ripping on the drums. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it was a good series. We watched it. We didn't have the sound. We watched it in the green room in between shows a couple weekends ago. No good. Yeah, we need to. Yeah. We need to crank because it the ended sound. last night, and it's it's a, it's great. You know, Pam won't watch it. She doesn't oh, want, yeah. And it is very, very unauthorized, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I'm going to talk about her. We have the romantics, oh, good. by the way. Yeah. This song's good, too. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about Pam. Yeah, because she is. She was not happy. She will not watch this uh, series. And she plans to tell her life story, timely, in a new Netflix documentary. Her son Brandon Thomas Lee is a producer on what's been dubbed the definitive documentary about the pop culture icon. Uh, according to the New York Post, Pam was completely against the Hulu series. She won't watch it. She thought, um, even though Lily James, who plays her f- phenomenally, um, <clears throat> reached out to her, uh, not interested, and does point out that Pam is like the hero in this story. Nobody listens to her. You know, she's sort of right every time she says like, oh, don't do this. Don't get Bob Guccione involved. Don't sue. And then everybody, you know, does exactly the opposite, fucks her over. I know he's got a big hog, Vinny, oh. because he's steering the houseboat. Yeah. With his cock, but what if he could? What if he used his cock as a rudder? Wouldn't that be even a bigger hog? <sighs> Deep water. Have to get yeah. to the water. It, it, his cock would be more like a keel. Oh, keel. Yeah, yeah keel cock. Yeah, this is a mm. keel cock. I mm. mean, a rudder is. You yeah, know. you're right. Sorry, go ahead. That, that's a keel. Has everyone or anyone actually seen the video? Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> I, uh, I've never was, seen it. When Adam asked a question that wasn't especially relevant to a later generation, which was what porno was important in your right. life or a uh, sex boat or whatever your example was, I'm like, we didn't really have that. I was like, no, fucking Pam and Tommy Lee. Everyone's, right. God, everyone I know saw How old were you? Well, well, I was 94, 95. Okay, so I was 15. Oh, was my that, God. Was that your first, first no, no, porno? No, 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 the first. What was that your, was the right, one. Let's go around the table. First por- porno. It was. I remember it was, mine. It was a genre picture called. Wa- <laughs> Come on. It was a genre picture called Waterfalls. You can probably picture what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what scrambled you. I was wondering how Brian got scrambled. I'm the most well-adjusted person in this room. <laughs> he got scrambled with his wet porn. Adam, first, first porn. All right. Um, I had a. Like Super Eight wasn't mine. Now none of the, nothing is mine. My first everything is somebody else's because right. my dad didn't have it. But the first one you saw, first one, <clears throat> the first. All right, first one I ever saw Place was waterfall. Literally, my my buddy Ray's older brother Rob had a Super Eight 
of like black and white. It's like a stag film. Yeah, yeah like a stag film, like a genius, a sailor. It was like John Holmes. Right. And but, but there's no place to play it. You needed people to clear out. My dad never left the sofa, you know. So my grandparents went out of town and we went over to their house and we didn't have a screen or anything. But in my grandparents' bedroom, they had this white chest of drawers that had just flush mounted white drawer sure. fronts. And it ended up being ostensibly. Uh, a screen, sure. and we just went in there and projected it in my grandparents' bedroom. And then at some point, so I was like 16, I was always fucking around. At some point, like halfway into it, I went and pulled the middle drawer out like eight inches and went, 3D! <laughs> <laughs> and everyone went, sit the fuck down! We're watching porn. And then later on, I ended up with the porn reel, yeah, but no projector. Oh. So I would find myself in the bathroom <laughs> and I was like holding up. It's super eight. It's like eight millimeters, yeah. less than half an inch, you know, and I was holding it up to the light. And I was like, Jesus Christ, John Holmes's dick is bigger than mine, even in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was making stupid jokes when I was fucking 16. Good. But that You're was good. my, That's then I, I graduated to B uh, Bobby Hollander Presents. Sure, I can't yeah. remember. And then. Personal uh, touch. Sex boat. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, Taboo Tale. Right. And what about you, Gina? First porn. The first thing that even remotely looked like porn that I ever saw was on Skinamax back in the day, you know, like at, at night, Cinemax after midnight would show what, at, like softcore, Lady Chatterley's Lovers. Oh, that's oh, not yeah. that, that, That's not real. Yeah, that's the first thing I ever saw. Mm hmm. That's not porn? What do you got, Vinny? He was plowing her on the back of a veggie of fruit truck. Uh, it doesn't count. Oh. I, I actually, my first one was a classic um, and didn't know it was a classic at the time. We went to Baton Rouge, Plank Road, uh, 15 years old, and uh, Debbie Does Dallas. Oh, that is a classic. In. Yeah, and who knew that that was going to be you know, one of the biggest? Yeah. The yeah. hedgehog is in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's all downhill after that. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. blow all your minds. Mm. Do you know who was there with me when I saw my first porno, Waterfalls? Mm. The genre picture? Tom Brady. I knew you were going to say that. Tom Brady was in the room. Tom Brady, the goat. The goat was that, in the room. That is not gay. <laughs> no. That is perfectly not gay. Hardly anyone was blacking <laughs> off. Why was he in the room? <laughs> It was, I, he was, he was, the, I don't know if you're going to believe me or not. He was a good athlete. He was on the baseball team and uh, I was not a good athlete. I was the scorekeeper for the baseball team. And after a game where I was in the locker room and there's no one else there and someone, some one on the team, not Tom, I think it was Jason Zakos had a, uh, had a porno waterfalls and he popped it in. There was a video, there was a TV in there for watching film or whatever. And, uh, we got a few minutes of, uh, waterfalls. Wow. But, uh, think about this. We all watched our first porn with other dudes. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. you're harder than a team. Ten penny nail, and you can't do anything with it. Yeah, you know, because... I was more of an eight penny, but I get what you're saying. I I gotta say, yeah. So I had with I've never seen the Pam and Tommy Lee like in its. Oh yeah, me either. In its. Oh, that was seminal. Well, what seminal? <laughs> seminal vesicle. What I was. Um... <laughs> There's the that scorekeeper. That might have been that year. That might have been the same year. Bald Brian, not bald Brian. Oh, no, thick head of hair. Brian. Yeah, look at that. The so, I I said I'm a conscient. I I interviewed Tommy mm. and maybe Pam and you know found out the tape was stolen mm -hmm. and put it up and and I was a conscientious objector. Good for you. Same I with did me. what uh, Coca Cola is doing yeah. with Russia. Yep. I'm pulling out. Yep. I said uh, I don't care. I'm not going to watch this as an objection to this ill-gotten gain. Good. That lasted for uh, a period of time, but then I went on the road, and you know it's like you're so weak, you're so vulnerable, yeah. yeah. You know when you're on the road, it. you know, it beats you down. And Drew and I were doing University of Pennsylvania, and we got back to the hotel room late. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I was just sitting in my hotel room. It was cold outside, yeah. you know. And I, I turned on the you TV. You remember this night very well. I do. As I remember because I turned on the TV. It was like it was like a. It was like a <laughs> I was, it was lonely. I, was, I needed comfort. So I, I needed a human touch. It was on TV? <clears throat> well, you turn on the hotel TV, and it comes up with the, oh, with the selection, the with the right. menu. And there it was. You know what I mean? And I was like, it's been a couple of years. I, f I feel like I, I honored. Mm. You know, I What's made, done is done. What's done is done. And put it back in the corral. So I bought it, oh, boy. and it was the heavily edited version oh, of it. Oh, that'll teach you. But you end up watching the whole thing for 14 bucks, and then it was like, ah, oh, fuck. That wasn't even yeah. pud worthy. 
<laughs> well, so, you find out in the show that they did end up, according to the show, Pam convinced Tommy, who did not want to do it, to just give the rights over to this and this internet company because the guy said, you don't sell it to me, then it'll stay out everywhere. You can't do anything about it. If you sell it to me, I control it. I put it behind a paywall, and that way it makes it much harder for people to see. And if that's your goal, to get less people to see it, you got to give it to me. Yeah, this was like a big Marriott or Hilton or something, mm-hmm. and it was right right there well, in the menu. And that's why you got the edited version. Mm-hmm. I, I can't watch that shit when, like, we hear about, um, like, revenge porn or, like, you know, Jennifer Lawrence's uh, nudes off her phone. I I'm, I can't. I, I'm not into it. Yeah. Freaks me out. Yeah, it's a live you feel feels intrusive. Yeah, she didn't want that out there. Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, but <laughs> I also don't necessarily agree with this. Not only is Pam doing a doc... She's going to make her Broadway debut All right. mm-hmm. in one of my favorite musicals, Chicago. Mm-hmm. She's going to play, if you saw the movie, she's the Renee Zellweger part of Roxy. It's going to hit the stage April uh, 12th. And long list of women have played Roxy. Melanie Griffith, Christy Brinkley, Brooke Shields, Ashley Simpson, and Erica Jane. Do you know who that is? I'm afraid I do. Tell us. She's a real housewife. Okay. Uh-huh. She's the one whose so- husband, the lawyer, got in some serious shit. Oh, that one. So that's where we're at. Embezzlement or something. Stealing from the victims or, yeah, whatever. Well, that's where we're at with stunt casting. Mm. Okay. Uh, There is one more I really want to show you since we've been talking about shipwrecks the past couple days. Mm -hmm. Do we have time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So about 107 years after explorer Ernest Shackleton's ship was crushed by ice while he was traveling in Antarctica in 1915, the vessel has been found. And not just found, it is in shockingly pristine oh, condition. <laughs> it's exactly. So I'm going to show you a couple of the pictures. Frozen in time. It is crazy. Um, People reports that in order to find the ship, an expedition team made use of the coordinates from the original captain who wrote it down when the vessel sank. It only ended up being four miles away from where they thought it was going to be 10,000 feet underwater in the Weddell Sea, which is the northernmost part of mainland Antarctica. And we're looking at the pictures. Even the, the name on the ship is perfectly preserved. Um, the most What's amazing the name of the ship? Endurance. endurance. Oh, Endurance. Oh, ironic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can see it from the <clears> stern. <throat> and like Brian said, one of the factors playing a huge role in its preservation is that it's super cold. Um, the shipwreck will now be protected as a historic site, and it will not be disturbed. So After it's looted. It's yeah, 10,000 right. feet below the surface. Anyone who can get to it. You know, like some troubled teens going to happen by and spray Graffiti. paint the side of it. It's 10,000 feet under the water. Yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be it was fine. pretty incredible because he saved every one of his crew. Well, I did that, hear they it's all... It's an amazing you, story. Of course you know I, this. I, I, they all I, abandoned I've, I've ship. We get it. You love boats. Tell me about it. <laughs> Tell well, us. Shackleton, <laughs> when they got stuck, you know, he they, they had to dismantle pieces of everything. He made these makeshift uh, sleds. Uh, they ended up living on some of the dogs that were on the ship. Yeah, you know, they happens. had to eat with whatever they had to, and he had to make his way over these, you know, mountains that they never thought they could make their way. Finally, got to some sort of civilization and got help back to get everyone else. Wow! And no one died, and he was never he was never given his due for doing that because. It was during World War One, and mm-hmm. we were romanticizing war at the time, right? It, it, we always romanticized war because that's how you got more people to go. And people were like, what were they doing out there anyway? And why Why was he doing this? You didn't really have to go and, and all this kind of stuff. So no one ever really talked about Shackleton from that point on, but he was this major hero that never got his due. We, we talk more about Serena's great, great, great uncle um, of uh, – Robert F. Scott that went to the South Pole and never made it. Okay. Mm-hmm. He gets more more press. Yeah. yeah. More ink. You bring this up when you're eating dinner with Serena, like uh, yeah, again with sexy, Uncle who never star. fucking yeah. sealed the deal. <laughs> yeah, come on. The guy he he went out for a dump, never came back. <laughs> he, that's where that phrase comes from. Um Oh um, really? Yeah, I may be gone for a while. Should mm-hmm. we should we try to pull the boat up? I mean, and like, then whose boat it, right? would it be if we were able to Float it from the There's bottom. No of the sea. There's no He's way they British. can float that. There's yeah. no way. Oh, well, they got tons of robotics and stuff now, and some technology. No, no, no. It's water. Long. Remember when oh, they you were built three... half a fucking kayak <laughs> and your, your? I know something about the sea, sir. <laughs> your... I know something. <laughs> Listen, years and years ago, there were three whales stuck. 
Mm-hmm. And the Russians sent a, a big freighter. To, remember these three whales that were stuck in, and they were breaching and the whole thing? They got stuck in, in the, the ice? Yeah. Yeah. Adam saw with the we, gas we brought oh, ice right. cutters. We brought everything. We had every country in the world trying to save three damn whales. Mm-hmm. Right. You think they're going to go and get that out? Uh I don't, I mean... And we, we don't can, even have Russia anymore helping. Well, what I see, the question is, is what's above it? If it's just ice. 80 feet of thick worth of ice, yeah. then that's probably an issue. Yeah. But I saw a story about, and Chris, you can find this doc. I think it was a P-38, which is like the coolest plane of World War II. Came out right at the end of World War II. The P-38 was essentially... If you want to know what that plane looked like, it was essentially the one Howard Hughes crashed right. in yeah. the movie. Yeah. That's essentially what it looked like. And it was a like a tank buster. And it had like a twin boom rear whatever and a mm-hmm. big fucking cannon in the front. And it was fast. And it, it came out toward the end. But one of those... <laughs> the 23 skidoo. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it, it's just a piece of fucking machinery with a big 50 caliber whatever in the front just for shooting at German tanks. Either way, one of those went down in the, uh, it was North or South Pole or somewhere in there, got buried under like 80 feet of ice and they drilled the hole and they pulled the thing up like piece by piece and they fucking restored it oh, in a shit. hanger and it, and it flew again. But I wow. can't remember what that, I cannot remember what that dock is called. I'm pretty sure it was a P-38. Anyway. Well, if you zoom in on the picture we're looking at, that plane has already been canceled. Oh, right. Um, because of the image in between the 23 and the skidoo. It's American Indian? It sure is. Oh, my. Yeah. I think they built those three miles from here at Lockheed, where oh, yeah. the Burbank Airport is. is uh, Bob Hope Airport? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, memory, <clears throat> if memory serves. He's getting down. He's got a hatchet. He's so, doing the splits. Yeah. God damn. Doing yoga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I I think I saw it on the History Channel or Discovery. Yeah, the plane was million. called the Glacier Girl and uh, the the Hunt for the Lost Squadron. Oh. Time Machine, the Hunt for the Lost Squadron might have been it. Was it a P thirty eight? Yeah, P thirty eight F. Yeah, and uh, it was buried, and they wow. dug it all out, and they restored it, and they they whatevered it. It's a really interesting, uh, really interesting dock, but um, they. You know, the way they do it, they would have to get the ship up now is they would have to do it all robotically, and then they'd have to put a bunch of straps under it, and then they'd have to have a bunch of inflatable bags that floated it up. Now, what you do with the ice after that, I don't know. All right, let's bring it home, uh, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Sucking cock in a mobile. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right. Well, the great Joe Coy is here, and he'll be uh, up next. First, I'll tell you about X Chair. From the first moment I sat my X Chair, I thought, wow, this is what a real office chair is supposed to feel like. And uh, that's it. I bought one years ago and just used it at my home, and now I'm sitting on one right now. Phil Collins should get one of these. <clears throat> oh, yeah. He should. Beautiful. Yeah, because uh, it's got the LMX massage on there and temperature regulation. Exclusively designed for X chair. And uh, it'll cool you down as well. It'll warm you up or cool you down. Plus, customized support of X chair's patented dynamic variable lumbar or DVL. Try X chair for yourself risk free for 30 days. Once you realize just how much better it is than your current chair, you'll make the switch. You'll never go back. It is X Chair, right, Dawson? Go to XChairAdam.com now. That's a letter X, ChairADAM.com, or call 844-4X Chair for $100 off your order. X Chair has a 30 day guarantee of complete comfort, and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 a month. XChairAdam.com. Because I was like, well, where am I going to go? And you're already pot committed at yeah. this point. Yeah. I mean, we already hired the director and, and, and the producer, and, you know, the, I just paid like $12,500 for these stupid letters behind me. Right. Like, like, like no one knows that. Like when that when they say cut, they just break it and throw it in the trash. 